Good morning family and welcome to service this morning. It is so lovely to be back with you. It's been a while and I'm super excited this morning to share the word of God with you. But if you allow me, let's dedicate the service to the Lord. So Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, that you will speak through my lips and you will think through my mind. I thank you, Lord, that I will speak your word clearly, boldly, accurately, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, through this word that we will hear what, what's the plans that you have for our life. What is our purpose here on earth, Father? And I thank you, Lord, that after we listen to your word, Father, that you will seal the word in our heart so that we become doers of the word and not just hearers. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Well, family, the title of my message this morning is Step Up. And do you know God's word reveal his plan for our lives. You know, according to Psalm 139 verse 16, God knows the beginning of your life. He knows the length of your life, but you also know the plan for your life. Amen. In Psalms, we see that God also directs our steps. We read in Psalms 37 verse 23 to 24, it says, The Lord directs the steps of the, God, of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them by the hand. Family, we are standing at the beginning of a new year, and I know it's the end of January, but it's still in the beginning of the year. And you know, this is a time of our lives that we always ask ourselves questions about our future. Have you ever wondered why you're here? What is your function? Where do you fit in? Why are you working where you are working? Why are you married to the spouse of your life? And why are you at the church where you are serving family? You now, and sometimes we ask these type of questions, but we, sometimes we don't even get the answer for them, right? But if you haven't asked that question, you need to because there's a reason, there's a purpose why you are on this earth. There's a purpose why God permitted you and I to be here. Today I want to say to you, God has a plan and a purpose for your life, even if it doesn't feel like it sometimes. You know, even sometimes things doesn't make sense for us. Sometimes we go through a life frustrated and we've all been there. We've all been frustrated in life when things are just not going the way we want it to go. Amen. The source of our frustrations are endless, but let's look at a few. We get frustrated with our families and with certain relationships in our life. We are frustrated with people's behavior that are sometimes annoying and it's sometimes tiresome and it seems that it doesn't change. In fact, it gets worse as people get settled in your ways, right? You know, and the second thing is we get tired of coping with the stress and the anxieties of perhaps being a single parent, the after effects of a divorce, constant health issues, financial burdens, being alone, waiting to God to bring you that special person into your life. And the list goes on and on family. But listen, you know, families and relationships it will always need perseverance to overcome the frustrations of life. And at times, it is not easy. You know, the third thing is, young people, I know it's some, school is sometimes frustrated, and school only being open a couple of weeks, but already you hear the kid says, no, it is hectic, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, and so the hours are long, I know that. And people are often difficult and they test your patience. And there's teasing going on behind your back. More is asked of you um, than possible. You struggle with the feeling of being different, yet you want to blend in. But guess what? I suppose that is how um, educators and staff also feel. So students, perhaps you and your educators have more in common that what you realize. The fourth thing is work can be a source of frustration. You know, finding employment these days is difficult. And the longer it goes on, the more difficult it becomes. 
and the more frustrated it is. And if the job that you have only pays the bills, but it bankrupts your spirit family, you may feel frustrated as well. So what happens when we get frustrated? We take our frustrations out on our family and on our colleagues and on our friends. You know, after our kitchen burnt last year and we walked away from that situation unharmed, that ordeal made me realize that we still have a lot to do on this earth for the kingdom. And I'm sure if you should reflect on 2022, you would see how God protected you in certain, in certain situations. You and I might not have the full picture why we are here, but we need to trust God. And I believe there's more for you and for me, more than we can ever dream or, or imagine, my family. But sometimes the devil keeps us busy with what we have and what we don't have. He keeps us focused on what is going on around us. The load shedding, the water shortages, the petrol um, price that's, that's increasing. Sometimes, he, and even sometimes we put limitations on ourselves by our thinking. As you can see, trying to figure out this question, it can be a bit difficult and it can be a bit frustrating. I once read someone said that, I hope life isn't a joke because I don't get it. I want us to get it. God wants us to get it. He made us and I want us to just put our trust in God. Find out what is His plan and what is His purpose for our lives. So maybe God might just have the answers. Family does in his word says the plans that he has for you and for me is to prosper us, to give us a hope in the future. You and I were made by God. And until we realize that truth, that we were made for God's purpose, then your life will never make a bit of sense. Amen. You will look inside yourself for answers and all you will find is more questions. You and I can work on inventing a purpose for our lives and work until we're old and until we gray. But still our lives won't make sense. Unless you come to the, relation, the realization that you were made for a purpose, for God's purpose, there is a reason you are alive, family. And it is for God. Think about it. A life without a purpose is no life worth living. First of all, if you don't believe that God has a plan and a purpose for your life, then life will seem empty. Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 1 verse 2, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Have you ever felt that life is meaning, meaningless? Family without realizing God's purpose. Life doesn't make sense at all and it will feel meaningless. Amen. Secondly, when you don't know God's purpose for your life, life can be an endless cycle of uselessness and hopelessness. It goes on in verse 4 and 5 and 6. Solomon says such things as generations come and generations go. The sun rises and the sun sets and it hurries back to where it rises. And the wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes. We see here life becomes like a merry-go-round, going around and around, never get anywhere. And so Solomon gives us result in verse 8. All things are wearisome. More than one can say, in other words, he is saying, it will wear you out if your life is meaningless. Believe me, believe me, this thing called life will wear you out if you just go around in circles and doing the same thing over and over. over. Thirdly, when you don't know God's purpose for your life, he will never be really satisfied, family. 
Notice the last part of verse 8. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is full of hearing. Family. Fourthly, when you don't know God's purpose, life itself will seem insignificant. Listen to verse 11. No one remembers the former generations, and even those yet to come will not be redeemed, will not be remembered by those who follow. Isn't that sad? I don't know about you, but I want to be remembered. I want to leave a good legacy. Not one that I achieved on my own, but one that I achieved through the strength of God and what God did through my life. How many people did I impact with my life? That is the kind of legacy that I want to leave family. After listening to Solomon now, do you believe now that God has a plan and a purpose for your life? I want you to say this. I have a hope and a future. Amen. Family, you and I are here to be his hand and his feet. We are here to care for people. We are here to bring people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But you may say, but I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not an apostle or prophet. My friend, you don't have to be any of those things. The only thing you need, you need to love people. You need to show the love of people in and through your life towards other people. Amen. And that is why we are here, to love people back into the kingdom of God. Show them the same love that He offers us, family, so that they can come to know Him. God wants us to lead others to Him through our love for them. Apostle Paul persevered in his life and in his misery and in his ministry through afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, sleepless night and hunger. The frustrations that we face is far less stressful and intimidating. So perhaps we can learn from Paul how to overcome these frustrations through the power of purpose and passion. Paul writes in Philippians 3 verse 10 to 15, and want to know Christ in the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by overcoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, know that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature be of the same mind. Family, we see here that Paul put behind him all that he valued in his heritage and in his past for the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ. Sometimes when people testify of how they became Christians, they will talk about the awful life that they lived and before they became, became Christians. And in many cases that is true, but it's not in every case. And we need to remember that. Paul's testimony is not about what he gave up, that he gave up a bunch of awful things or that he was a terrible person. Rather, he describes all the things in life of which he's so proud of that he still values, is in value enormously, and he says it is these good things that he gladly put behind him. What is Paul, what Paul is saying is Christ surpasses everything of worth for, for him. All he wants held dear and bold in his life upon he walked away from because his heart has been captured by a greater passion, his mind by a higher purpose, his will by a higher calling. He wanted to know Christ and become more like Christ. 
and that purpose that he that desired filled him and drove him for the rest of his life. You know, simply telling ourselves or someone else about the love of God is not nearly as effective as having our heart captured by the love of God family. And that greater affection exceeding anything else, or it should, it's exceeding everything else in our life. Family, the power of purpose and passion increases willpower and it changes life. The steadfastness of the spirit and the worthiness of our purpose will then overcome those frustrations. Listen, we will all experience frustrations, but we all need a worthy purpose so that our frustrations of life doesn't hinder the purpose of our life. And sometimes we all need to ask ourselves some tough questions and it's not always comfortable. Are we an on-purpose person or a whatever person? What is your purpose in life? Who and what are you living for? Who and what do you want to become? What legacy do you want to leave behind? And when we can answer those questions clearly, we will find our purpose in life. And then I believe our purpose can fuel our passion. Listen, purpose without passion lacks energy and fire. And passion without purpose lacks focus and direction. Sometimes Sometimes people lack passion for a variety of reasons, such as familiarity. We allow something that's precious to us to become familiar to us, and then we take it for granted, like the people around us. Laziness or lack of passion may increase with age. Our zeal to do things can diminish as we get older. Perhaps people lack passion because they don't know, they don't have purpose beyond themselves. It doesn't matter which way you go, but it does matter what you do with your life family because you have a God-given purpose on this earth. The Bible says the Lord has made everything for His purpose. That is Proverbs 16 verse 4. The reason so many people live frustrated, confused in restless lives is because everything was made for God's purpose. Let me tell you, when you try to live your life for your purpose, you will end up working against all creation because it was all made for God's purpose, family. Everything from the birds to dirt was made by God, for God. And that includes all of us. As all of us is listening to me, that includes you today. We were made for a purpose. People who live for themselves are in the small business. And how, but how can we become more passionate in following and doing what He wants us to do, family? Number one, believe that passion is a deciding difference in your life. Realize that God desires passionate Christians. Look what Titus 2 verse 14 says. God who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. And then Paul also writes in Romans 12 verse 11, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Number three, pray for passion if you have lost your passion. And then return to your first love family. Listen, laziness is in a state of mind, it's a state of the heart. It means without passion, there is no love. In Revelation 2 verse 1 to 6, Jesus warns the church of Ephesus about their lack of passion. He acknowledges their accomplishments, their hard work, their doctrinal purity. But he says in verse 4, you're doing all this stuff in my name, but don't think, but I don't think, you love me anymore. And then number five, family, use your spiritual gifts. Paul writes to Timothy, do not neglect the gift that is in you. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see 
your priorities. And then number six, put your passion with your purpose. Family, because we want to be passionate about God and about the people in our lives. We want to be passionate about eternal issues. We want to be passionate about the call that God has placed on our life. We want to be passionate about the next generation. We want to be passionate about things that truly matters, not insignificant things. Paul says twice that he is pressing on. He is keeping his eyes on the prize and always moving forward. And that is how we need to love family. Press on and don't focus on things that doesn't matter. At the end of Luke 9, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem and the destiny that awaited for him on the cross. His purpose was clear and he's firm on pressing on. But as Jesus and the disciples are going along the road, two different individuals approach him and they say they want to follow him. And look what the first one said. But first let me go bury my father, says one. Another asks, let me first say farewell to those at my home. Reasonable requests, we might say. However, family, the call of God on our life isn't always reasonable. Let me also tell you, God doesn't like divided loyalties and passion. Jesus says that he's keeping, he's moving forward down the road. No one and no one who puts his hands to the plow is fit to look back for the kingdom of God. Whether we are proud of our past, ashamed or a mix of both, Jesus calls us onward to make the most of our days. For God's sake, family, not for our sake, but for God's sake. None of us knows the length of days, so forgetting what lies behind, Paul, Paul and all of us are urged to press on. It's not that events in our past are now deleted from our brains, like a, a, compu a file on a computer that just gets erased. No, our brains doesn't work like that. It is those things in our past that no longer have to dictate who you are or how you need to act in the present or in the future. In Christ, we do not need to be prisoners of our past, but partners with God in shaping the future. Because one of the central acts of our faith is remembering. It says, do this in remembrance of me. What we choose to remember, family, is so vital. It's so important that we, that we focus on God, that we renew our mind daily. Family is more important to remember what God did for us than what any person has done to us. Amen. You know, when, I tempt, when I'm tempted to feel frustrated, I go and I meditate on the word of God and it helps me to remind me what people endured, accomplished, overcame and achieved when they could have been frustrated in the Bible stories. So if anyone that's listening to me wants to know their personal purpose for their lives, you must start by knowing God. I understand that we have some people who are seeking out this God thing and is still unsure about it. And all I want, and I want to invite you personally to come along on this journey. I also understand that we have some people that call themselves Christians here today, but you have never really chased after God with all your heart. I want to invite you to come on the journey as well. There's no, nothing better than giving everything over to God. Finally, I know we have some people who are sold out to God and found their purpose and their meaning. And that is awesome family. But I invite you to, because there is no doubt about it, God is about to change your life. God is about to change my life. And this 2023 will be the most exciting year for your life and for my life. The Bible says that it is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. 
part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone right now we all stand at the crossroad either to step up or in live a life that's purposeful in God and expect God to do exceedingly abundantly above everything that we can imagine or you can just carry on doing what you do year in and year out and you can live an ordinary life. So one road requires some work and effort and one road is easy but it will always be frustrated. My challenge to you today is take the road that will change your life. Step up to what God has called you to be. Tap into His purpose. Tap into His word that will lead and guide your footsteps family. Because the plans that He has for you is to prosper you, is to give you a hope in your future. But it's up to you and I to step up and to see God in all things. Amen. Well, family, I hope that you enjoy this message. I hope that you are going to ask you some tough questions. And I hope that you will find the purpose that God has for your life. Amen. Well, bless you and enjoy the rest of your day.